Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Sorry, I'm just kind of realizing a bit of a mess going on here. How are you all doing? I hope you're staying safe. Uh, it was pretty, uh, what the heck is that? Start or riot? I'm here, man. I'm here. I mean, you can start a riot. That's cool. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's fine. How are you doing, Mojidin? How's everybody doing? Um, it was interesting here. Um, actually, it looks much clearer now, and the wind has died down. We're, uh, we had to, we are at the end of a tropical storm. So this morning, the power was coming in and out, and, like, you know, the lights were flickering, and the winds were crazy, lots of rain. But we seem to be up past all that now. If for some reason something happens, it's because I lost power. But I think we're okay. Things have been pretty clear for a while. There's a bunch of branches in the backyard. I can see it through the window, but whatever. It's winter now? No, it's summer. The middle of summer for me. Uh, I'm in the North America, Northern Hemisphere, uh, you know, East Coast. So, uh, let's see. We got some other stuff coming into the chat. I'm going to let it load up while we got stuff going on. I'm going to do with you I'm wearing my interface. Uh, what can I do if Studio One doesn't recognize my interface uh, from... Rodrigo, Rodrigo, um, which interface are you using? And I would say, um, yes, first I want to know which interface you're using. Second is see if your machine can recognize your interface. Um, if your machine, and, and you do that by, like, if you're on a Windows PC, you can go into, like, Device Manager. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can go into the Audio MIDI Setup. And you can, you can check if your computer actually just sees the device itself. If your computer sees the device, then maybe you, um, you just need to like check a driver or something. Um, if your computer doesn't see the device, I would change the cable. You might be getting power through the cable, but maybe just like the data lines um, aren't working. Uh, it's really dependent on like what interface you're using too. Um, so, uh, oh, you got an audio box 96. I've worked with Reaper with the same things. Okay, so that's making me think that there. So you're saying the audio box has worked with Reaper, but it's not really working with Studio One. Uh, Google your interface name and, uh, and you're not showing up. Um, I mean, yes, obviously you can Google as well. Um, I can only offer so much right now, but I, I hope it helps. Um, but yeah, you can Google things. But that if you're saying. The audio box works with Reaper, but it doesn't work with... Um, Rodrigo, are you on a Windows PC? Are you on a Mac? Um, let me know that. Maybe maybe there's something else. Um, I know... So here's a weird thing. With Studio One 5 and Windows PCs, there's... Uh, there's been like this this conflict with like antivirus stuff, um, which sometimes causes things to be very weird. That may be your problem. Um, I would do, yeah, okay, you're on Windows. Um, I would do a very quick Google search of Studio One 5 or Studio One um, virus protection issues. And some people say you have to like allow it through the firewall or allow it access, something like that. My guess is that's what your problem is. It's the, the conflict of the, the virus, antivirus software and Studio One. And that's where the conflict is going. Um, I've seen a few people do, having this issue and that is like 90% of the fix is figuring out what's going on with like the antivirus stuff. Time to hydrate. Hey, this one's for you guys. Okay, I don't want to have too much because by the end of the stream, I'm really going to need to use the bathroom. But um, <clears throat> Okay, so today we're going to go over some other really cool things inside Studio One 5 pardon my itches. Um, what we're going to go over today is using um, clip envelopes or clip gain envelopes. Um, Rodrigo, you're very welcome. I hope it helps. Just do a little bit of research, a little Googling. It should be fine. Um, I see something else. Uh, Mojadin sent something else in. Uh, you'll have to give me a second. I can see it. I can see the messages come in, but then the actual like text chat is slightly behind. So Whenever you see me see something come in, like I on my screen, I can see it come in, whatever. Um, have you used any interfaces from the Apollo series? Yes, that's my main. My main is actually an Apollo twin. Um, one of the one of the old versions. Like I got mine like a month before the Mark II's started coming out. Um, mine's great though. Um, and mine is an Apollo twin 
solo. So it's only got like one DSP core. Um, I use some of the stuff, but I don't go too crazy. Um, in the future, when I start doing like more recording things, um, I would go with something like a duo or a, a quad to get more DSP to actually imprint some of the unison stuff that Apollo's offer within the tracking. Um, but right now for doing like mixing stuff, um, if I run out of DSP, I can just print the track and then clear those plugins out and, and do stuff later. But yes, my main is actually an Apollo, a UA Apollo twin. And if I remember correctly, it's a solo. Um, it might be a duo, but I can't remember. Um, I'm sure I could look it up real quick, but whatever. Um, okay, so we were going to go over um, clip gain envelopes and how cool they can be, how very powerful it can be, and some really weird and interesting stuff you can do with them. Um, and we're also going to get a little bit into time stretching, uh, mostly with the new tape algorithm, which a lot of people have been asking for a while. They want tape stops. This is very, very close to a tape stop because it affects the audio over um, pitch and length. And so like, as you stretch the, the, the clip out, it'll tune it down as if tape is slowing down and it's not playing back as much and you get that, that effect, but we'll get into that. That's going to be a little bit later. We're going to start with the clip gains. Uh, Modrodin, is it possible to load into the console plugins, third party, like waves, for example? No, with the UA stuff, when you want to put plugins on, it's their plugins. When. But Modrin, if you didn't know, on the input side of Studio One, you can put plugins. And you know what? Let's dive in. Let me get my mouse over here. Whoop, here we go. Um, let's do that real quick. Let me show you putting a plugin on the input stage inside Studio One. So you were just asking if you can do it on the Apollo Twin. That is that is their stuff. You can't offload other people's plugins onto the UA, onto the DSP that happens over there. You can only do their stuff. It's proprietary things, that's how that works. But if you wanted to use some of those when you're tracking, so like here's my inputs right now, and you can see here's the mic that I'm talking to, it's seeing my voice, don't mind these clips, I was doing, I actually plugged it in not too long ago because I had some other stuff going on. So I'm looking at my inputs and I see stuff going on here. If you wanted to, track through plugins and commit those sounds. This is stuff that you cannot undo. If you want to commit, sorry, I hear lots of yelling from the other room. <laughs> if you want to commit these sounds of your plugins, all you have to do is go to your inputs in your mixer, find the input you want to affect, um, I mean, if we really wanted, I could plug in a guitar into input one, but I'm just going to show you like the concept and I'm just going to use this one here. It shouldn't change the sound to you guys. Um, oh, you know how the input works. Well, this is for anybody else that doesn't, if you want to commit sounds and put plugins on the track itself that you cannot undo, you just go to your mixer, you go to your inputs, you find the input and you put on whatever plugin you want to do. Uh, you were saying UA, so let's do like 1176. Uh, we'll do the UA one, and here we go. You can see it kind of dancing around a little. Uh, and then you can also follow this up with something like, uh, let's do something in waves. Here's all my wave stuff. Um, something I want to mess around with, which I think I have. Uh, cassette transport, no, 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 no. That's from Wave Factory. Uh, vitamin, I just watched a video with vitamin happening. Um, and you can see that it's, the audio is tracking through these things now. So if I had some settings and I wanted to commit all of this stuff to uh, the track, I put these plugins on the input. And then when I hit record, there it is. And it doesn't change. Um, you can't undo these things. You can only manipulate after the fact. So if you're cool with always committing your sounds, then yeah, go ahead, do it. Uh, let's see, I was asking because I want to find an interface that can load plugins prior to sending it to any software. I want, for example, OBS Studio. Well, <clears throat> well, let me show you this. Uh, I'm going to open up my console real quick for UA. And going to you guys, which is going through um, Streamlabs OBS or OBS Streamlabs, uh, here's my mic. And I could have put like a preamp on here. I don't. I just use like the clean one that comes in, but 
it does hit a little bit of LA-2A, and it does hit a little bit of 1176. So going to you guys is exactly that. Um, but I can't load third-party stuff into here. I can only load UA things. Um, so if I wanted to go in here, uh, that this is how you would put a plug-in on, and you can go in and do any of this stuff. I'm not going to do it now because this would mess with the audio going to you guys. But this is how... Um, this is how the audio is actually sending to you guys is through this channel strip in my UA console. So, all right, Studio One, let's do some stuff and some things. Clip gains. I want to get rid of my, let's get this out of here. We don't need that. And we can do, boop, you guys can see my shortcuts. Uh, okay, so let's start off with some really cool clip gain stuff. Uh, we're going to do it on this lead vocal. We'll make it real big. Let's get rid of the mixer so we can actually see all the stuff that's going on. And I'm zooming in, yes, but it's so that you guys can see what's going on. Now, here's my lead vocal. Yes, it's not the usual color, but I mean, I think it's a pretty good contrast of what's going on. Uh, actually, let me come over here and move my head out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, to let's start off to turn clip gain envelopes on. Right click. And then up on the top here where you would be able to view your bend markers or time lock or edit lock is gain envelope. You just have to turn it on. Uh, Mojane, all right, thank you very much. I was, I was searching for this. Seems that I will be locked to a complicated way of doing it. Uh, yes, a bit. Um, also do some research into, um, OBS because they do offer support for, I believe they offer support for BST plugins. So you might be able to put your plugins right on the input within OBS. Don't quote me. I can't remember since I do everything over here anyway, it doesn't matter, but do some research there. Um, so here we are within our, our clip, right click on, a, on the event and activate gain envelopes I believe you can also uh, reset gain envelope or toggle gain envelope so toggle should be like turning it on and off if I remember correctly um, so if you want to add a keyboard shortcut to this you absolutely can so everybody I, I think everybody knows but let's just go over some of the absolute basics and let's take like these little bit of breaths I'm just going to solo this track real quick these breaths, ooh, come here, mouse, um, in between all of our stuff here. So there's a breath. Come on, play. Give it a second. These are all breaths. Okay? And we can see them. I believe what happens in, in this tracking, it looks like it was compressed on the way in, which is fine. It's committed. I like it. It's, it's good. You can see that there's not a lot of deviation in, in these vocal tracks. <clears throat> yeah, you can do it, but not waves, sadly. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mojadin. Um, is it, like, not waves VSTs? Maybe you could do... Oh, you're probably on PC. So it should be VSTs. All right, sorry, Mojadin. <clears throat> so everybody... I think at this point, everybody knows the basics of... Um, gain envelopes. If I wanted, I could select a range and like take this breath and make it like ridiculously loud. I don't know why my computer is being real laggy at the moment, but it's probably my machine. So I don't think that this is normal. Um, so now looking at it, this breath is going to be ridiculously loud compared to this one. Can can't you blessings pay it? Like when you got into it, you also heard the printed reverb that's on here. Let's go to here. The reverb bumps up, but the breath is really, really loud. Okay. You can do the same thing, but opposite. Let's grab this, go to our trim and bring it way down to get rid of the breath sound. Things pay it and it doesn't have to be just like blocks like this. If I wanted, I could take this note and get rid of it, and then I can create a slant 
to duck this gain out and even adjust the curve of it as well. Let me make sure. Oh, I do have some other stuff going on. So that should go away. That, that'll help clean up my computer a little. So you can go in and if you only have three points, like a recovery point, an end, an end point, and a start point, you can adjust the curve. Yeah, see, it's a little more snappy now. Um, you can adjust the curve for your gain envelopes. Things. And then you can adjust these points to be in different areas. Right now, I have snap to grid on. Uh, and my tempo is correct. Pay so, and then I can adjust both of these, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've kind of seen all this. This is good stuff. You can go into the middle. And now here's where things are going to get crazy. And this is just using, let's get rid of that, um, just a couple points. If I go into here and I put that up, you can see the middle of the note is going to get real loud. And uh, let's uh, put a recovery point and bring this one way down. Like we're really messing with the performance at this point. Uh, let's go to here. Pay it to... You know, so it's pushing and pulling. This is a way to add some life to a performance. It's not necessarily how I would, um, because this is now going to alter what is happening in your plugins. So this is before your plugins. Um, so all of your gain staging is going to be a little bit weird. This might be good if your vocals don't have like printed compression on them and you want to start balancing them out without fully normalizing everything. Um, you can do this to kind of clean up those vocals and the quieter passages you can kind of bring up and the louder passages you can kind of bring down and balance things here and there. Um, maybe what you want to do is zoom way in like this little peak right here. I just want to bring that guy down just a little, you know, and kind of balance that out a little bit more. Pay it to... And if we undo, Pay it to... that's that T of toll. Let's redo. Pay it to... Pay it to... Pay it to... So you can go in and adjust bit by bit, passage by passage, by passage however much you want, right? Now... Uh, let's just grab all these, and I'm just going to... Whoops! Uh, oh, you can reset the uh, gain envelopes. And that was a keyboard shortcut. Gain, reset gain envelope. Doesn't really have one right now, so let's go ahead and assign one. Uh, control R. Cool. This area... There it goes. Okay. Right. Reset the gain envelope. Undo. It's going to put all that back. You can see it's a little bit of a process because it kind of goes through everything, but we're going to reset our gain envelope. It's deleting all those points. I actually might do a feature request where this is like, you know, you just saw I went like this and hit delete. And I, th I would think that maybe this should be like a different lane or almost like when you're looking at your your automation like i can go into automation things here and if i go to volume and i put some points in it, it almost to me should be something like this where if i go in and make a selection and hit delete it's not actually deleting the audio it's deleting the points that you know what i should probably write that down and go and make that feature request uh, i'm gonna write it write it down Clicking envelope as automation style lane. Okay. I think I'm going to go to the forums later and put that in. Okay. Now let's get real creative and real crazy. Here's some cool stuff you can do. I have snap to grid still on, right? I am going to get my pencil tool or the paint tool. It's the same thing. And let's go ahead and do just a good old sine wave. Now you may have seen this in some other videos, but I'm going to do it because I haven't done it. So let's have some fun. Uh, also don't mind that bend was on. That's for something I'm working on. Um, let's go crazy. Let's on this vocal add some um, like tremolo. 
because tremolo is basically automated volume automation. Sorry for the itchy nose. Um, I'm going to go from here. This is dependent on my quantize. So let's go. No, you know, let's go crazy just to really highlight it. 16th notes. Ready? Sings. Okay. So about here is where the ings starts. I don't want to hit that S because I don't want that S to get too crazy. I want the ings to really have this effect. With the paint tool and the quantize amount and snap on. I can draw this out. Now I'm just going horizontally because I want to show you what happens when I go up. Is this going to start to draw a sine wave? And let's go like that. Now look at what it's done. Let's zoom in a little. It drew in all of these points and altered the waveform to now create this tremolo. And take a listen to it. Can't you blessings? This is automated tremolo. Can't you blessings? I want to make sure for uh, I'm crazy. No, nope, yep, this is definitely going to you guys. Because going to my mix bus and my mix bus is going to you guys. Just double checking. Where's my sends? Yep, it's definitely going to you guys. Can't you blessings? Okay. You can do this for any anything that you have gain envelopes on. Um, let's undo it. It's going to undo it real quick. Beep, beep, beep. This is a bit more of a process because you saw all of the different points that it put in. Um, it's going a little bit slower on my machine because my machine is showing its age. <laughs> but look at what it's actually doing. Look at the waveform changing. This is great. Okay, we're back to normal. Let's do eighth notes. Or let's do, yeah, let's do eighth notes and then we'll change this to a saw wave. Because why not? Let's find our point again. Ings starts like right here. Let's go crazy. <laughs> this is going to be too much. You're actually, it's actually probably going to be clipping, but that's okay. This is just showing the example. It's absolutely clipping. Let's undo. Thankfully, it's fewer points. And you can see how the saw will change depending on which way I go. Uh, let's do, let's do that. That's not as bad. Sings. Right? This is fun. Undo, 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 undo. Let's make this, it's going to be way too many. And a square wave. Oh, God. Oh, that's going to be too much already. I can already tell. <laughs> I don't want to clip it to you guys because nobody wants to hear that. So I just need to be a little bit more subtle with these things. Ooh, that. Sings. Almost making like a glitch style effect, right? <clears throat> Just undoing. Beep, boop, beep, boop, pop, boop, pop, beep, pop. Uh, Mojo didn't do a copy of the track like this. Add a crazy reverb and crazy pans re and reduce the volume. Trippy reverb. Yeah, you can have lots of fun. Because it's like, if you do that, so you know what? Let's do exactly that. Let's do this. Let's do duplicate. Let's do open up my mixer. And I want this. I think I have effects tracks that are just hidden right now. I do. They're all down here. I don't know why they're not in a bus or a folder, but it's fine. Um, look at that. I got a plate going right here. So let's have some fun. Let's change the output of this to only go to the plate. And I don't, there shouldn't be any, oh, there, the automation is on there because I showed you as like an example before. Um, muting this. It's only this reverb, right? Let's get this out of here. Where's our guy? Let's do the same thing. Let's grab our paint tool and I'm gonna just gotta go back to a sine wave, but I'm gonna make a very big sine wave. Let's go half notes and do the whole thing. One more. 
too much. It's going to have to undo all of it. I have to be subtle. I have to be gentle. I have to. I have to. Again, I don't want it to... Now, mind you, this is going to the reverb, and I can just pull the reverb down, and it won't clip to you guys. But it's easier to just do this. Let's go. Okay, that, I, I can work with that. Because here's the cool thing. Let's just go in and grab this point. Wait, yeah, think about it. Come on. Oh, it may have just crashed on me. I think I did too much. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. Cool. All right, let's listen to this. So now we've automated, essentially, the send amount into that reverb. Um, and mind you, this is only going to the reverb, and then you're hearing the return of that reverb. Now, this vocal isn't hitting that reverb at all. And what we can do is we can change the overall. This is now like our send fader right here. Come back over here. Can't you, you could hear on a half note wave is how much volume we were essentially sending to this reverb. Um, you could do a whole bunch of other stuff and really make it trippy. Like, what were you saying? Reduce the volume. Um, and some crazy pan stuff, you know, we can do, we could do exactly that. Let's put our automation on. Let's go to pan and not you. I want you to be pan. You can just be volume. You can be pan. And let's do our same tool. Nope, wrong one. Uh, that five is the shortcut. Um, let's go like this. Let's see what this does. Um, and we'll take the other one out real quick. That's kind of trippy. You can hear it going back and forth. Let's undo that. Now automation is a little easier. And let's go with bars. Let's go all the way. Do like that. It's fine. You can hear it in the reverb where the send is hitting the one side, even though it's coming out of both sides. The main in it is going from left to right. Now we are having fun. Let's get our automation out of here. Um, why is that on our main? That shouldn't have happened. It's okay. On this guy. Reset. We just did that keyboard shortcut. Oh, because it did complete. That's why. That's why. That's okay. I think that actually proves a point. I didn't see that. This is what they would call a um, a, a ghosted. Uh, it's up here. Uh, hang on. It is because I did duplicate tr complete, but it's actually called it's something like a um, like a ghost. I need to dissolve the ghost connection audio. Uh, boop, 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 boop. I haven't done this in a bit because usually this actually doesn't happen uh, for me anyway. Uh, remove gaps. Boop, 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 boop. Hmm. Okay. Well, whatever. That's that's why it's doing it though. Is um. Uh, shared. Duplicate shared. Separate shared copies. That's for instruments. That's interesting. Uh, but that's under edit. Duplicate shared. Select. Beep, 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 beep. So I have to have these two select events. There's like a dissolve shared or something like that. Whenever you see something like this happen, it's because it's they're shared. And it doesn't usually happen for me, which is why I'm not taken by surprise, but curious. It's fine. It's fine. 
It's nothing to worry about. Yeah, it'll keep the original normal, just double the effects like that. Yeah, yeah. But you can see where we're going, where, you know, this one still has the uh, the pan automation going on. And instead of automating the fader, which is our sends to our reverb, um, we can go back to our clip gain and make sure we're only doing this guy. But again, I think it said it was shared. Um, so let's change, let's fix that. We'll just bounce this one real quick. So now it should be its own thing. Let's go to five and gain envelope. And then we'll zoom in. Kind of not extreme enough. Got to go more. Oh, too extreme. <laughs> and let's do. There we can do that. See, you can be real trippy with this stuff. You can hear it's changing things and the pan is going something different because the pan is set to whole notes while our clip gain was set to half notes. And all of this stuff is just on the um, the clip, uh, excuse me, on the grid, on the snap. We have snap to grid on. Um, if we were going to do freehand stuff, let's just get rid of all of that. Freehand. And we have, you know, <clears throat> freehand, it, it doesn't matter. I can just kind of whoop. Oh, I still have snap on. So, we can do this. And it's whatever we're feeling. Um, I am drawing this one in. I don't think you can do this on a fader port because um, then you're writing automation at that point. Um, <clears throat> but it's sort of the same thing. Like if we go in here and we do write automation, why? Oh, because uh, we have it set for write. Actually, let's just do touch automation. Um, on you. Let's make sure we're doing volumes. So you guys can see it happening. Okay. Uh, you can see there's no volume automation. <clears throat> so, very quickly with the fader port, I grabbed the fader on touch, and once I started doing it, you saw there was a little bit of a delay. Hit play, started messing around, and it really, like, Kind of messed around a bit. Okay, I'm gonna undo a lot of stuff. Actually, what I'm gonna do, it, it's that's fine. It's doing all this stuff. I don't care about all that. What I'm gonna do is, I think we're gonna move on now. We can see that clip gains. Uh, there's very powerful. There's lots of crazy stuff you can do with it. Um, I am going to close the project and not save. Yeah, yes, delete that. I don't need it. What I'm gonna do is go right back into the same song because we didn't save, and that's what I wanted to do. Now, let's do time stretching like tape, right? Right. That's still going to you guys. Okay, cool. Nothing nothing really changed. Um, let's, um, let's have some fun and do it not on a vocal, but maybe on, like, a, a guitar, because this will really kind of show you what's going on. Let's get the mixer out of here. And let's get to this tool. Okay. So with your inspector open, over on the left-hand side, you have all of your usual things. But underneath time stretch, there is now a new option. Um, instead of drums, instead of sound, instead of solo, we're going to go to tape. And I'm just going to solo this guitar out real quick. Um, I'm also just going to kind of clip this. And now I'm only going to be affecting this end here. So let's just take a quick listen. 
And just to make things easy, I'm going to slam this up the center. Okay. Um, let's let's slow it down. I'm going to move my head real quick again. I think that was. Uh, make it nice and big. Right here. So I'm actually going to do right here. And now, watch. I'm going to take this. And with... Where is he? I need the... It's not the bends tool. Hang on. Hang on. I know this one. I just have to find it real quick. Let's edit. I want to take the rate stretch tool, which is... I think it's this guy. No, that's the bend marker. Um... That's the one. You have to hold down a modifier. So I had the smart tool on. And I'm holding down option on a Mac. So this would be alt on a PC. And everybody's been looking for tape stops. Let's do exactly that. I'm holding down option on a Mac, alt on a PC. And I'm going to stretch this guy out. And I'm going to go a little bit crazy to really exaggerate. You know what? Let's just go a bit more like that. OK. So our before is essentially this guitar. This is on the right right now. We put the other one to the center, but it's just like this big chord. Um, so if we go back a little. And here's the, the time stretch. Ready? It did it a lot. Let's go a little bit. Right? You can hear it It dropped its pitch, it slowed down, but this is just like time stretching this little bit right here. Where this can be really powerful is actually coming up here to the tempo. There he is. Um, we said that our point was going to be here, and I'm going to put another one in over here, and I'm going to drop it way down. Come on. Hang on. This is not doing exactly what I wanted to do, which is interesting. Uh, okay. So track. I, I'm happy to have this open. Uh, I prefer the vinyl time stretch effect over tape. Um, vinyl is cool. You can absolutely do that. Um, hang on, because this is supposed to be tape. Yep, tape. Group, guides, you know, whatever. I don't need that. Um, let's just analyze it real quick. It'll be fine. It shouldn't be shortening. That is so odd. Sorry, this is not how this is supposed to be doing things. Maybe it's not tempo. Maybe I need to be looking at something else. That's new tracks. That's not the one I wanted to hit. Um, that's automation. Maybe you guys can help me out. What, what am I missing here? Here, time stretch. That's why. That's what it was. So there you go. Uh, that, that was my mistake. Sorry about that. I forgot to change the tempo to time stretch. This is an important thing. But let's even take this out and make it ridiculous. Actually, ready for how crazy this can be? Is I changed the, the effect. So... That's in solo. If we take everything else out, So if we wanted to do everything, you do have to go in 
to like track by track. And I'm just going to do a few of these time stretch tape. Um, I want to do it to, I know that my base holds out. So I'm going to do the same thing. Time stretch tape. Time stretch. Oops. Tape. Time stretch tape. Um, and then I think there's a, like a keyboard or something that's going on. A couple synths. Here we go. Time stretch, tape, time stretch, tape. This isn't exactly a tape stop because it won't stop, but. It gives you that effect of this is slowing down and the pitch goes down. Um, so you can do cool, um, cool kind of stuff like this, you know, at, at the ends. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can do it like in the middle too. Um, everything that's affected is going to happen over here. Listen to the, what it's doing on the bass. It's like they're restringing the bass. It's like they're just taking it all down and then putting it right back up. Um, and you can do it in these different directions. You can, you know, you saw I can have it ramp down or ramp up. And because it's Studio One, let's change our curve. Let's undo that again real quick and just kind of do that. And then we'll have it ramp up a little. Mojanin, by the way, after you are done with this guide, I have a request. Okay, if it's possible for vocals to automate its position from mid to sides and back to mid, um, I can do it, but not with automation. Okay, that's hmm, from mid to sides with automation. I will think about that while we're finishing this up. Um, Let's change this curve to be a little bit like that. So lots of fun, right? Take these, delete, get those out of here. Um, and we can do the same thing. Like we said, we can ramp it up at the end uh, instead of, let's take this guy and actually make you, let's do our max of, uh, what are our tempos at? 125, so let's go to 175. And just go up with it. And you'll hear at the end, everything will go up. So the pitch is going up. It's not always something you would do. I mean, we can make this real short and quick. Boy. Here, you can do, let's do something like this, where it kind of ramps down a little, and then back up kind of quick. It's a little stepped here, but it's actually not bad. It's also because it's on the, uh... oh, I have other guitars going on. I don't want this one, and I don't want that one. And it's because, like, I'm making it happen so fast. That's why it sounds, like, real choppy like that. If you stretch it out, it, it cleans it up a lot more. So here's how you can do some really cool. Oh. Oh. Am I still connected? I don't know if I'm still connected. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Am I still here? You guys tell me if I'm still connected. My power just flickered real bad. You saw all the lights freaking out. If I'm still connected. I don't even know if I am. <laughs> uh, that could have been very interesting. 
<laughs> Did you see it? Did you see it? It was enough that my machine over here went off. You saw the lights freaking out. The wind has picked up again. Ooh, it's really picked up. I think we're I think we're back. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay. So but it seems like I'm still with you guys. Looks like I am. It says excellent condition. Okay. Um, Mojadin, let's go back to your thing. By the way, after you're done with this guide, I have a request. Is it possible for vocals? Okay, let's find our vocals. Let's clear all this stuff out. Uh, get this stuff out of here. Vocals. Okay. I'm live. Okay. Do you live where tornadoes are alive? No, I'm not near tornadoes. This is, um, it's a tropical storm, which used to be a hurricane. Um, but I'm, I'm like on the, the Northeast shoreline. Um, so, I mean, it, it's strong winds, but it's not like, it's not typhoon hurricane style stuff. So, um, okay. So you were asking to automate its position from mid to sides. Now, are you taking Mojana? I want to make sure, um, you're taking a mono vocal and essentially splitting it to, then only come out the sides um because like if i have this vocal by itself Can't you blessings? are you trying to like split this and then almost make it like a, a false double so that it's only coming out of the sides because i mean Count your blessings. These are my actual doubles, and that's why they're hard left and right. And then when I have this, count your blessings. It sounds a bit wider. Get out of here, keyboard shortcuts. Um, but if you're talking to take a single vocal and then almost like do mid side stuff on it, um, yeah, keep it mono, split to sides. Yeah, a false double, and then back to mono. Okay. Well, that's an it's an interesting question because when you take a mono source, double it, pan it to the sides, and then listen to it like that, you're essentially just back into mono because you have the same signal split to both of your speakers. Um, so a, mon a mono sound up the center is played out of both speakers. A mono sound panned is just that sound pushed to one speaker or another. If you take a mono sound, split it, and duplicate it, so essentially you have two copies of the same mono sound, and then put it out of both speakers, it's the same thing except louder of just having the one vocal up the center. So if you have one vocal up the center, it's playing out of both speakers equally. If you have two copies... Two exact copies of the same vocal, one panned hard left, one panned hard right, it's essentially the same thing. It's just going to be louder because it's dedicated um, waveforms to those speakers, and it's essentially doubled. Um, sorry, my bad. I wanted to say from mid to sides and back to mid. Now, are you saying to go from the mid, from the mid, I'm going to turn to you guys, to both sides or are you saying from mid to one side and then back to the other um that's that's the only thing i want you to clear up um in 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 your message uh, i just want to make sure because if you take if you're talking just take the a vocal and have it kind of go like this then that's just pan automation i mean that's easy enough um i can take this one open up my automation lanes with a go pan and then we'll just use our, our paint tool again uh we get the yeah the triangle wave at yeah both at the same time and then mid again okay with automation now Modrin I'm gonna be honest and say that I don't know the benefits of doing it because you're taking the same 
the same audio file and forcing it out of both speakers where in mono you're doing the same thing you're not getting any extra width when you do the from mid to sides and back to center again um what you could do is in your mixer on your vocals let's go to here and you go to your split you could throw a splitter in and i'm trying to think of because you wouldn't do frequency split you wouldn't do i mean you could do channel split So I wonder if we do this, if we do three splits and we do it as channel split. Um, Can't you blessings? Can't you blessings? Modred, I'm going to be honest, it, it, you're not going to get width when you do it like this. Because it's the same audio file being pushed out of both speakers. When you have a mono audio file with no variance whatsoever, um, then it's just summed back to mono. It's the same thing. If it's the same time and it, it's the same time and frequency then it's it's essentially it's mono again even if you have two duplicates you pan them hard left and right um and i'm just going to take the the splitter out and and, and get rid of it uh, i just wanted to remove that there we go um if i take this track duplicate complete right so now i have two copies of the same thing um if we listen to this one can't you blessings it's right up the center. So it's equally pushing out of both the left and right speakers. Now I'm going to put this one all the way to the left and I'm going to put this one all the way to the right and I'm not going to change anything. The volume is going to stay the same and all I'm doing is taking one, pushing it left and taking the other and pushing it right. It's the same audio file now being equally pushed out of both sides. Can't you blessings? And it's just louder because it's double the waveform, um, you know, if I was going to take both of these and now go to minus three, um, and actually I'm just going to show you cause I'm going to grab one of these again, duplicate complete again. Okay. So let's just take a view of these and I'm going to change it slightly so we can tell which ones are which if this one is in the center at zero and I'm just going to make a quick group. Uh, Vok group, right? Okay. Um, because my solos will, um, my solos will match up. So, mono vocal up the center at zero dB. Can't you blessings? Can't you blessings? This is the same vocal three times. One's panned in the center. Um, I kind of play with mid sides and with waves center VST that works, but to automate that. Right. Well, waves center is is definitely it's it's a like a mid side processing, which, I mean, you could do in here if you throw a splitter in, and you could do. Okay. There is a way to do it because you have to do the mix tool. You throw a mix tool in, you MS transform on the mix tool. And I don't know if you can automate this stuff. You might be able to. You may not even have to be, you may not even be able to do it through the splitter. Sorry, Modrini, I'm thinking of this as we're doing it live. Um, you have to transform it to be mid side because if I take uh, let's go back to here. Can't you blessings? 
and you can hear there is no side information. Everything came out from the left. Um, I'm going to put another mix tool in. But when you do a, a mix tool with an MS transform, and I'm just going to turn the back one off. Um, now in here, it's a channel split. Count your blessings. All of my mid information is coming out of the left speaker because we have it set to a channel split out of, after the MS transform. If I was going to take this down and even bump this side up for side information, th there's none. Um, this is different if you have like stereo effects, <clears throat> excuse me, going on, um, on your, like the, on, in this instance, I'm using it on the bus. If I had stereo effects going on on the bus, then yes, you would hear a difference. Or if I put these guys back in, and I'm just going to put this back to zero. Count your blessings. All of my side information without getting transformed back to mid side stuff is coming out of the right speaker now. So if I take this one back to zero, Count your blessings. my lead vocal is coming out of the left and my background vocals, which I have hard panned left and right, are now coming out of just the right. If I transform it back from mid side, Count your blessings. I now have the, all those things. But with a mono audio file, natively without using waves center um you're not really getting any benefit because like we said the same audio file with the same frequency response in the same time and without any like tuning variances um that would be like the only thing is if i detune one of them that's the effect i wanted to do but automate um then at at that point what i would do um, so let's say I'm making my own like fake doubles, which is going to be these two guys. Um, is uh, we, we we would need to like detune it a little, and I'm trying to think of something I could do that with. Um, that is native to Studio One. Like I'm, I know you have uh, like Wave stuff, but uh, if we do uh, no, these are mono channels, so binaural pan isn't going to work. Um, I'm just trying. I mean. Even if we do something like a flanger, that'll change it up a little. Um, mix tool won't help. I just want to, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that's just going to pitch bend a little. I mean, hell, we'll do a phaser. Uh, and I'll disable my group real quick, which is group two. And I'll go to this one. I think is this guy and I'll just do a little bit more speed and a few more stages and I'll go to this guy and one less stage and slower speed um, now Count your blessings. It, it'll it'll move a little and they are slightly different Count your blessings. and then at that point you could just kind of do like volume automation to get the mid out of the way so, I mean, let's let's do that real quick and we'll just write some volume automation on our on our lead vocal. Count your blessings. So, if I open up my automation, here's my volume and I just kind of ducked it out of the way, but because I have this variance going on now, and we'll just set that to read, um, you can hear the sides. So, this is a way to do it, but by by strictly duplicating something, by duplicating a mono waveform and then hard panning it left and right, you're you're essentially just making it mono again because it's going to sum to mono. It's just going to be three dB louder because you have another copy of that audio file. Um, Modrina, I I hope that um, I hope that helped you out. You you need to create some kind of variance uh, when you're making a false double like this. You could do something like detuning them a little. Um, I mean, I guess I could have gone into the files themselves. Uh, hang on, let's go back. Whoop. Even if I take the phasers off of these two, let me put my thing back on. Uh, not F1. That's not what I wanted. Get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, if I take this guy and if I tune him up 10, 
And I take this guy. Oh, my group is active. And I do that minus 10. And we delete all this automation. So we're just going to listen to the sides real quick. Can't you blessings? Maybe we'll make it more extreme. And make this. Oh, they're still together. Uh, b -b 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 20. Here we go. Minus 20. Can't you bless? So now they're tuned slightly different. If I bring my lead vocal right up the center again. Can't you blessings? And then we do our we can do our volume automation again. Can't you blessings? I think I did that on the wrong channel. <laughs> Uh, this one is supposed to be set to right. And you are supposed to be off. Sorry. That was me. I did that. Um, Can't you blessings? Right, so that's our lead vocal that got pushed out of the way. I'm going to set him to read. I am. Can't you bless? that's something you could do you have to make those variances and those changes otherwise it's just going to be the same audio source going out from the ends or excuse me from your left and your right and just louder if there's if there's no changes you're not going to get that effect that you want where it sounds like it's getting pushed out to the sides and back in So something needs to be different about those other um, audio files. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, I mean, and also you have the, the Waves Center, which is, I mean, they, it has some stuff going on underneath the hood, but but that's what I'm saying. Like, there needs to be some variance between the stuff that's coming out of the left and right versus what's coming out of the center in order to get that desired effect that you're going for. Um, sorry, I'm just going to close the song over here and not save because. All right, well, that's where we're that's where we're at today. Um, we had some fun. We went over some um, clip gain things that we could do. Um, we also sorry for the challenge. No, I mean I'm I, I appreciate you throwing it in and um, you know bringing it up. It's it's something we went over live and and. You know, I, I do appreciate trying to, I do appreciate one, your comments and, you know, you trying to uh, see how to do it, um, as well as all the other stuff that we learned today, like the clip gain envelopes and the uh, tape style, uh, tape time stretching. Um, but I like challenges because it made me think, it was like, well, what, what is he going for? What's what the effect that we're trying to do? How can we make it happen with Studio One, with native stuff in a way to achieve what you were trying to accomplish. And I think we're close, but you saw like there needs to be something that alters the center from the sides because otherwise it's the same thing and it's just nulling out essentially. If I was going to flip the phase on um, one of them, it would just like like the, um, the sides versus the center. If I flip the phase on the center, everything would cancel out because it's the same audio file and the same time and the same frequency response. But when you saw when we like detuned it a little, you know, 20 cents up, 20 cents down, and then took the center out, everything was still there. It was, you know, warbly because of the tuning, but it was all still there. Okay, that's where we're going to say goodbye for today. Um, I appreciate you guys all coming and hanging out and um, spending some time with me this afternoon and hopefully learning a couple things. Uh, secondly, I appreciate everybody who sends the super chats in that helps me continue to build this channel and make videos for you guys and do these live streams and all that other stuff. So um, if you're able to super chat, thank you so much. If you're not, just share the videos that you find helpful. If you can just share, like somebody says, hey, how do I do this? And I'm like, oh, Tim's got a video that does that. Just share. That works for me too. Anything to help get the get the, the stuff out there and the knowledge out there so that we all become better engineers and better mixers and better producers. That's really my ultimate goal. But 
if you can donate that's awesome too I'm not saying you have to i appreciate it though um <clears throat> the last plug i'm gonna do is um is for lessons if you guys are interested in lessons for mixing or anything like that uh let's see yes i typed that correct what you can do is you can email me i just sent it into the chat um send me an email saying i'm curious about lessons and then i will re respond to you saying hey thanks for reaching out to me for lessons here's how it works etc 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 and what i offer is a free 15 minute intro lesson for one you and i get one on one time and i kind of explain how the entire process goes from there so if you are interested feel free to shoot me an email and i'll get back to you as soon as i can we're going to end today. We're going to come back on Thursday and we're going to have some fun. I think on Thursday we might do like another one of those rapid fire uh, mixing things uh, where I give myself about an hour to mix a song where it's like, you know, what I would think is like a, a good rough draft to send to a client to say like, hey, is this cool? Is this the right direction? Um, <clears throat> what I need from you guys is for you to send me files or, or send me ideas of songs that you want me to mix. I, uh, I don't know who's been active on um, Facebook recently. I put up a poll saying, hey, who wants to see me mix some hip hop style stuff? The poll kind of went towards negative that not a lot of people were really interested uh, or excuse me, not a lot of people. More people were not really interested in a hip hop um, style mix video or mix stream. But there are people out there who are. Um, it seems like the Presona Studio One Facebook group is more mm, rock and EDM dance techno stuff, um, which I'm happy to do that stuff as well. Um, uh, let's see, Modredin, thank you. Do you also do videos with stuff that are asked? Yes, all of my videos are user requests. Um, you know, it. you may not know it's exactly you, but that's how I generate videos is by people saying like, Hey, I'm having this kind of problem. And here's my solution to that. Or, you know, Tim, can you make a video on this thing? Yes. Here's my, uh, my response to that. Like top VST analyzers for masters mixes. Hey, if you, if you want me to, um, drop it in some comments, shoot me an email, uh, let me know on Facebook or any one of the social handles that are right down here. Um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, things like that. Um, yeah, reach out to me. Let me know. Um, by all means, you know, popular demand videos, they will get made. Um, and if that's what if that's what people want to see, I'm happy to make them. So we'll come back on Thursday. I think we're going to do a rapid fire mix. Um, I mean, we just got to find some stuff. I'm just going to post some things in some Facebook groups and maybe some gear slut stuff and maybe some other groups and whatever. I'm trying to find some tracks. We'll do a rapid fire. We'll have fun. You guys can see kind of my process and we'll go from there. Until then, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Don't mind that buzz. Until then, I will see you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a great Wednesday and I will see you back Thursday at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. Until then, have a great one.